Good afternoon. We're going to spend some time visiting about the relationship of residential lighting and voltage drop from the utility. Most of our load is residential. A large portion of our load is residential load. And every one of those houses has lighting. The type of lighting, usually associated with the age of the house. It's almost impossible to buy an incandescent bulb today. We went through CFLs. Now almost all new construction that I visit is using LEDs. All of them have pros and cons. And what we're going to do today is show what our membership will see before they call us. When they think they have a problem, and a lot of times it's associated with their air conditioning compressors, the large house on a 15 kVA transformer with the locked rotor current at 150 amps can't do anything but draw the line down. <coughs> voltage drop, and this line is dead right now, voltage drop starts at the transformer. Then all the conductors that lead to the riser, whether it's service wire or a meter loop on a primary pole, Everything has voltage drop. 40 years ago, we had no problem running 140 foot of number four triplex to a 100 amp loop. All of that was voltage drop that we paid for. Today, we put a lot of primary loops on transform poles and we control our voltage drop so that we only have the voltage drop from the transformer and the voltage drop that can be in that 20 foot of wire in the riser before it hits the meter socket. Past that, the customer has his underground length and his load and his wire size that are the factors of voltage drop that he sees. So the first thing we're gonna to do today is we're gonna energize the board and we're gonna bring on two clear, unfrosted, incandescent, vanity ball. This would be in the bathroom of most houses today if they did not choose to use LED. So the first thing that we're going to do, put on our PPE, hard hat, rubber gloves, all of this will become energized. So I'll have on rubber gloves. Ida is going to help me and she's going to operate from this side. I'll operate from this side and when she accesses the board, the board will be dead. There will be no power on the board. So let's start with getting our PPE on. energize the board we have the super beast connected so that we can see the voltages we've already done the math for the voltage drop we know around 122 is our static voltage and then each one of these voltage drops take us down to somewhere around 118 or 111 or 91 and you can see those are the percentages the utility has a responsibility to maintain a certain level of voltage drop. If we get, we have problems, our conductors are too small, transformers too small, we have a responsibility to correct that when it's on the high side of the meter, when it's our assets. Past that, we'd like to help, but with 80,000, 85,000 customers, we can't string 500 MCM to every house. We can't have a 100 KVA transformer to every house. So there's limits that we can do to help our customers. Today, we're going to show you some things that you may offer, you might choose to offer our customer when we can no longer do anything to help them eliminate their symptoms. So we'll energize the board. You see two clear incandescent bulbs. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put on a small load that will cause a 3% voltage drop. Out here, the 
sag. We see it better than we do in the video, but I think you'll be able to see it. And I'll operate it a couple times. So that's a 3% voltage drop on these two light bulbs. 40 years ago, we said a white painted wall and a clear incandescent bulb is the worst thing our customer can have. And we advised them in those days to buy frosted bulbs and the frost would act like a little dampener. And sometimes they saw an improvement. We hadn't even thought about LEDs yet. We didn't know anything about CFLs. We had incandescent bulbs. Today, I don't even know if you can buy an incandescent bulb. I have some. <clears throat> now we're gonna put on a load that'll draw the voltage on these bulbs down to 111. That's what our customer would see if he had high starting currents in his air conditioner and it drugged down the whole house, he would see that 9% voltage drop. Now we're gonna introduce a neutral problem into this house, which will not be natural. It won't be what the customer had since the first day he bought his house. And this neutral connection will drop the voltage on those bulbs to 90 volts. That is a 25% voltage drop. Something has to be wrong for the lights to get that bad. I'm gonna turn the board off. Ida and I are gonna replace our bulbs with a non-dimmable CFL. Now that bulb could be hot. This one will be a little warm for you. I'm gonna put it right there. All right, go ahead Ida, where you're putting in a non-dimmable CFL. That'll be this bulb right here. Now one time we had the CFL as our company emblem, but CFLs are the devil. The end of the world, they're gonna pollute. So we don't advertise that CFLs are good for anybody anymore. So let's energize the board. Remember, these are non-dimmable CFLs. We're going to apply the 3%. I can't see it here. The voltage falls to 118. That's a 3% drop. I can't see it. Now we're gonna bring on the big air conditioner and we're gonna cause a 9% drop. When I focus on the lights, I can see that 9% drop. And if I had some, if I was surrounded by a white ceiling and white walls and I was focusing on those lights, I'd probably see that and it would probably bother me. Now we're gonna introduce that neutral connection and that 25% voltage drop. Now that's not bad. Compared to what you're gonna see, that's not bad. The next bulb we're gonna put in is a dimmable LED 5000K. 5000K is the color of the light that comes from the bulb. Dimmable LED. Looks like a conventional light bulb, you cannot tell the difference by looking at 
dimmable or non-dimmable. Most new construction, big houses, everybody's got sliding dimmers and they have to have dimmable LED bulbs. So we'll bring the power on, introduce the 3% sag, I think that's significant. It's almost as bad as the unfrosted incandescent. Now we're going to pretend that the air conditioning compressor comes on and send the 9% voltage drop. This will be the 9%. To me, it looks about the same as the three. It's not a whole lot worse than the 3% sag on a dimmable LED. Now we're gonna open that neutral or cause that resistive neutral and introduce the 25% voltage drop. That is significant. We will remove the dimmable LED. And put in a non-dimmable. Again, you can't tell by looking. We're buying all these bulbs commercially, Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart. So none of these are special. This is a non-dimmable LED 5000K. We bring the board hot. Bring on the 3%. To me, about the same as the non-dimmable or the demo, do you think it was worse? Now we're gonna close that, make sure we don't make that mistake again. Now we're going to act like that air conditioning compressor came on. We're gonna put the 9% on it. And these are non-dimmable LEDs. I think that they, the, these two brands, probably manufactured in the same building in China, one's dimmable, one's non-dimmable, they seem to have the same effect, uh, seem to be affected the same by voltage drop. Now we're gonna introduce the 25% voltage drop on this bulb. Turn the power off, close this neutral, and we'll change to the last bulb that I want to show you, and I found this bulb years and years ago, and it is a General Electric LED bright stick, odd shape, non-dimmable. Neutral's closed, we're gonna bring the power on. Force the 3%. I'm looking right at the bulb and I cannot see any sag on that bulb. And all these bulbs, when I say sag, they're showing you the voltage drop across the bulb. If you know that our line regulator the utilities line regulator, he steps intentionally 
at five eighths of a percent across his range. And in the course of a day, he might operate a hundred times, but it's at five eighths of a percent. And the industry knows that no one can see a voltage change on a light bulb at five eighths of a percent. Some of these bulbs at 3%, we're able to perceive that. With flicker, usually we talk about one, one and a half percent, two percent, and then some people that are overly sensitive to flicker, they can see that. Here, we just put three percent on, no, no effect at all. Now we're going to put the 9% that would be caused by an air conditioning compressor. No visible change in the output of that bulb at 9% voltage drop. Bring in the resistive neutral and force 25% voltage drop across this bulb. And you can see here, we're gonna to fall to 90 volts. Turn the power off, restore my neutral, remove my rubber gloves. To wrap this up, all bulbs, all light bulbs, are consumables. The manufacturer did not create light bulbs to last forever. So all light bulbs have a life. Some of these are advertised 2,000 hours. Some are advertised 5,000 hours. Some LEDs advertise 10,000 hours, but none say that they will last forever. The quality of the light bulb, I believe, has an effect. We went through five different bulbs, a couple of different technologies. I've had this type of bulb. I've been using this as a demo probably now for five or six years. So I know these bulbs were around then. But if you've got a light fixture that shows the bulb, our customer may not want this type of bulb. They have to shop. But my point for all of this is that the quality of the bulb, the type of the bulb, uh, wattage, dimmable, non-dimmable, all of it can have effect on what our customer perceives when there's a voltage drop. I'm not telling you that we can tell our customer that it's always the light bulbs, but I'm suggesting that sometimes a light bulb change may have an effect on what they see inside their house when we can no longer do anything to help them. Thank you for your time today.